Despite being less universally loved than the third game, Fallout 4 catapulted the post-apocalyptic franchise to an unprecedented level of success. But while both games took the world by storm, it's actually been the one title Bethesda didn't create that has been the best new installment so far. Although it was initially written off as a buggy, broken mess, an assessment which was admittedly not that far from the truth, oh my god look at that spinning head, Obsidian Entertainment's New Vegas perfectly blended the astute storytelling of the original isometric releases with the open world wonderlust and first person shooting of Bethesda's revival. The fourth game still gets all the attention when the series is brought up of course, but it shouldn't because New Vegas did pretty much everything better five years before. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 things nobody admits Fallout New Vegas did better than 4. Number 10. It actually let you roleplay with different builds. One of Fallout 4's biggest problems was that it extremely limited how fans could roleplay. Your character's backstory and role in the main narrative was set in stone, and while you could tinker with it to an extent, it was always within the strict parameters the devs set out for you. New Vegas on the other hand let players tackle both the story and gameplay in whatever way they wanted, with the only facts for certain being that you were a courier before you were shot in the head and left for dead, it's up to you to tailor your character's personality, playstyle and motivations going forward. Even better, you could reinforce these ideas with the gameplay itself. Want to be a smooth-talking swindler who bluffs his way through the game? How about a hulking strongman with low intelligence who solves every problem by punching it to death? Both options are just as viable as each other. Every type of build is accounted for when it comes to the ways the game lets you complete quests, and it makes for a far more open and expressionistic experience in the long run. Number 9. There are no throwaway quests. Although Fallout 4 wasn't lacking when it came to the amount of activities it packed into its expansive open world, as randomly generated quests always give you an enemy base to attack or a friendly settlement to defend, it didn't take long for players to get annoyed doing jobs that Preston Garvey was clearly pieing off on us. New Vegas on the other hand, while having fewer quests to pursue, ensued that each one felt important and worthwhile. Not only were the stories great, even when they appeared to be simple fetch quests, but each one had more solutions than just kill this and kill that. Cool little segments like trying to smuggle slaves out of a shady casino without raising suspicion made for intense sequences, but it was the variety of options available as well as incentives to take part in the quests at all that made them so compelling. Number 8. The Soundtrack is Iconic Although it might not seem like a big deal, the soundtrack in a Fallout game is essential in establishing what kind of experience you're in for. Consequently, when Ain't That A Kick In The Head rang out across the opening of New Vegas, you knew you were in for something far glitzier than the subdued, lonesome musings of Fallout 3. Taking inspiration from westerns and Elvis-style Americana more than any other entry in the franchise, the soundtrack perfectly differentiated Obsidian's new world from those that came before. Staples like Big Iron and Johnny Guitar were perfect choices to evoke the courier's dusty Wild West journey, while bigger pop hits like Blue Moon reflected the 50 showbiz focus of the New Vegas Strip itself. Fallout 4 also had a pretty solid soundtrack, but it was more a collection of good tunes than a cohesive mood board with a theme, relying far too heavily on the best tracks from the third game and lacking the confidence to properly break out and establish its own identity. It's obviously not the biggest reason the game disappointed people, but the repeats didn't help the latest title from feeling a bit like Fallout 3.5. Number 7. The perk system is way more interesting. Fallout 4's new perk system was a total mess. Moving away from regular stats that increased your efficiency with skills like lockpicking, guns and speech, these incremental upgrades were now tragically gated off behind the perk screen. Consequently, while there were more than ever in Fallout 4, the majority were there to simply upgrade your boring base skills, rather than to introduce any radical gameplay twists. When it came around to picking perks in New Vegas on the other hand, Every single one had the potential to completely shake up your playstyle. Even the silly ones, like the ability to eat corpses, could be incredibly useful in the right circumstances. 
For instance, in a small side quest that has you uncovering an underground society who like to chow down on human flesh come dinner time, you can use your niche cannibalism perk to open up a new path through the mission. It only alters the quest in a minor way, but it just goes to show how much impact these perks had in New Vegas and how throwaway they are in Fallout 4. Number 6. Combat is rarely the only solution. Although there were great stories about players attempting to experience Fallout 4 without engaging at all with the title's combat, it was quickly discovered that there wasn't actually much scope for non-lethal playthroughs. Most of the quests are structured with gunplay in mind, and there was little wiggle room to use speech checks, sneaking, or hacking to come up with imaginative solutions to problems. In New Vegas, however, you don't need to be John Wick in order to have a good time. Sure, an assault rifle still provides a fine way to get through missions, but it's often more satisfying to complete them by using your wits and experimenting with the mechanics. Obviously combat is still important, and you'll need to know how to defend yourself so you don't get swarmed while out in the wild, but it's not the be all and end all when it comes to quests, and isn't the only solution to every single problem. Number 5. There's more companion variety. Fallout 4 did a pretty good job of upping the ante when it came to companions. Each one, from synthetic detectives to charming journalists, had a compelling personal story to be discovered as you bonded together while blowing the faces off ghouls. Unfortunately though, because the companions this time around were a much bigger deal, it meant that their flexibility in the game was severely limited. Likewise, because all their playstyles were similar, bar a few notable exceptions, it meant you weren't really incentivized to switch up who you brought with you on your adventure. New Vegas' supporting cast, on the other hand, didn't need to have detailed dialogue options or cinematic stories to be instantly memorable. Their own personal narratives were a bit basic, but each one packed an emotional punch. You didn't need everyone to like you either. In hell, in one quest you can even leave one of them trapped in a room to be served up for lunch if you feel like it. A move which would have been inconceivable in Fallout 4. Number 4. Hardcore mode is better than survival mode. When Bethesda released Fallout 4, the developers missed a trick by not including any kind of hardcore mode. Featured in New Vegas, the optional way to play made the harsh post-apocalyptic wasteland even more deadly, forcing you to balance food, water, and sleep meters while introducing subtle penalties like stim packs that heal over time, rather than instantly. It was the definitive way to play through Obsidian's title in my opinion, and added a much needed tactical edge to gameplay which was becoming increasingly action focused. Too late, Bethesda realized the appeal of this methodical style of play and released their own survival mode for Fallout 4. However, it lacked the balance of New Vegas's counterpart. Far more punishing than simply requiring players to keep an eye on a few additional meters, the survival mode was only for the most die-hard fans. It was still enjoyable in its own right and encouraged a substantially different approach to gameplay, but it lacked the balance that made hardcore mode not only viable, but arguably better than the base experience. Number 3. Not everything revolves around you. Often casting you as the sole hero who has the ability to save the entire world, by the time you're through with one of their games, Bethesda's RPGs essentially position you as the second coming of Christ. New Vegas, on the other hand, revels in its decision to cast you as just another average Joe. Sure, you're still propelled to the top of multiple factions and considered to be pretty important, but you never get the feeling that the whole world will grind to a halt without you. Everything will still go ahead, and you can choose to get involved or not, with plenty Plenty of stories still open to you if you don't decide to stick your big nose into everyone's business. You still get to impact the people and places you encounter throughout the game, but it's all presented through a personal framework, integrating your character more deeply into a world that doesn't revolve entirely around them. Number 2. Factions are way more interesting. Between the synth-loving railroad, the blunt force power of the Brotherhood of Steel, and everything in between, integrating and learning about all of the factions in Fallout 4 was essentially the thrust of the entire main quest. Annoyingly, while these groups were interesting, the ways you could interact with them was extremely basic. 
every ending essentially boiled down to you siding with one and wiping the others out, while the effects of your actions weren't felt on the world after you reached the end game. New Vegas's faction system, on the other hand, was pretty much perfect, where everyone, including the so-called good guys, were morally grey for the most part. It forced you to actually think about who you were working for, because whoever you helped, someone was inevitably going to suffer because of your actions. The way you navigated these communities required much more thought as you weighed up who to trust, which cause to join, or whether any of them were worthy of your attention in the first place. Number 1. There's no binary morality like with the ability to play factions off against each other, New Vegas gave you missions that didn't always have a cut and dry good or bad route. The karma meter was still regrettably in play, yet you weren't always aware of the consequences of your actions until it was already too late to do anything about them. And even then, some quests didn't bother telling you whether or not what you did was good or bad at all. Quests could just end with no karma reward, and the moral choice you just spent 20 minutes going back and forth over would haunt your conscience while you wondered whether or not you made the right decision. Fallout 4, on the other hand, is almost patronizing in its attempt at moral complexity, and while it admittedly tries to inject some nuance into the final choice specifically, you still have to resort to consequence-free genocide in order to actually finish the game. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below, and also, the people who made this video, they're right here, so go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head, why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.